I'm already on three point. Oh, sorry. That's okay. Already on three point three. Okay, that's you're making good progress, then. I just want to go over some questions for three point two, though. Okay, not a problem. We can do that. Let me bring up that homework. Well, three point. Mm? Well, it's three point two and three point three. Okay, not a problem. I have a walkthrough rendering for 3.4. It should be available um, after lunch, probably around two o'clock or so, okay? So if you're interested, All there's right. there's that coming up. Uh, let me 3.2, let me see. Um, there it is. All right, let's bring up 3.2 first and see. What, whoops, that's not going to help if I minimize everything, is it? Here we go. Let me share on Zoom here. Oops, that's not the right one. I have two of these open. Okay. All righty. So here's 3.2. What can I help you with? Um. I think it's 16. 16. Oh, okay. That could be. That That might be the Kebyshev's problem that was. Oh, yeah. This was the, the difficult Kebyshev's problem. There's actually a dedicated video to this one as well. But I'll go ahead and go over it again. Um, Let me see if I can. All right stabilize because my internet is a little bit spotty right now so i'm going to hope that it will hold out and if not then i'll switch <laughs> to my hot spot but we will see what happens um all right so 16 in a distribution of 160 values with a mean of 72, at least 120 fall within the interval from 67 to 77. Approximately what percentage of values should fall within the interval from 62 to 82? Use Kebyshev's term. Okay, there's a lot going on in this problem. So what we have when I start doing a Kebyshev's problem, I tend to always draw it out for myself. That's that's usually my approach. So I'm going to draw a line here. And in the middle of it, I don't know what kind of distribution this is, um, but it doesn't really matter for our purposes with Kebyshev's. Kebyshev's is a little more conservative in that way. So I know that I have a mean here and I know I have some value. So let me go back to the screen and we'll take a couple of notes from here. So I know that I have 160 values with a mean of 72. And then I have two intervals. I'm gonna start with the mean of 72 and 120 values out of 160. So here I'm gonna say that I have a total of, there's a total of 160 values. And I know that 120 of them fall between 67 and 77. Okay, and I also know that the mean is 72. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna start with that. So I'm gonna go and say, okay, I have the mean is 72 right here. And I've got 
some kind of interval. I've actually got two intervals, but I'm going to start by drawing the first one they give me. And I don't quite know how far back to make this, but I'm going to start here, right? So this is going to be 67. And this is going to be 77 over here. Okay, nothing too hard right now. Hmm. Now, the problem with Kebyshev's theorem is Kebyshev's theorem has a lot of pieces. And this, the way, the reason this problem is so hard is we've actually got two problems in one before we get to the answer. So we, we have a minimum, which is 67. We have a mean, which is 72. And we have a maximum, which is 77. Now, normally, when we were doing a problem similar to this the other day, we either have the standard deviation or we have the number of standard deviations above or below the mean. And in this case, we don't have either one of those, okay? That's what makes this problem a little more challenging because normally we have one of these and we're looking for we're looking for our percentage. Okay. Now remember that for Kebyshev's theorem, your formula, your percentage formula is always P. Sometimes we write greater than or equal to because it's really at least. So Sometimes we, we write this with the inequality symbol. And this is one minus one over k squared. Okay. Well, I don't have s and I don't have k. So what are we gonna do? Well, it turns out that we can help ourselves here with this indirect piece of puzzling information that they gave us right here. 120 values fall here. So I don't know what percentage of data this is, but I do know there's 160 values. So by way of a starting point right here, I'm going to say this. I'm going to find, so I'm going to first, step one, I'm going to work, work with the given interval and the percentage. So here's how it works. We know that we have 120 values out of 160 values that fall in the interval you see on the screen, okay? Now, if you divide 120 by 160, can you tell me what you get? Point 75? Point 75 or 75%, right? Now, do you remember there was a, a rule, there was a property of Kebyshev's theorem when P is 75%, right? We know what K is. Do you remember that from, that might be stretching it, but it's in the slides. Let me show you here. Um, here's my slides. Oops, that's not the ones that I want. Let me, give me a moment, please. Um, because I thought I had them open. But I guess I don't. So let me open it. 3.2. No, I have the homework open, not the slides. Okay, 3.2. Okay, here's my slides for 3.2. All right, it's coming. It's thinking about it, ladies and gentlemen. All right, so here's my slides. Or 3.2, right? Now, if I scroll down past all of the calculations that we saw, past all of this. Now, 
If you look at slide number 20, right? If your percentage is 75%, K is two, okay? So what they did was they gave you the K, but they gave it to you indirectly. You had to do some digging for it, but K was equal to two. So here, we know that now, because that percentage is 75, we know that therefore this leads us to the fact that K is two now. So now that, now that is just for this interval, okay? From 67 to 77, whoops, excuse me. Let me, my other recording is ready is what that's saying. Um, K is equal to two, all right? So what that's gonna do is that's going to now allow me to get step two. Step two is I'm going to use, use this information to find S, okay? And S is going to stay fixed across the intervals. K is going to be different depending on the interval that I'm looking at. But remember, we have two options when we find S. We have X minimum is equal to um, the mean minus KS, or we have X max is equal to the mean plus ks all right again we can choose which one we want so it depends do you want to work with 67 and 72 or would you rather work with 77 and 72 which which equation would you like to use 77 and 72 i i vote for that that tends to give you um less fewer negatives when you're doing the math all right so x max is 77 mm -hmm. our mean is 72 okay remember we don't know what s is but we do know k now because we found out that k was two so we're going to have plus 2s all right and this is our nod to algebra we're going to solve for s okay so what are we going to do to solve for s here Jason? Uh, we subtract 72. Right. Subtract 72 from both sides. I'll go ahead. This time I'll do it underneath. I think last time I did it on the same line. I'll do it underneath here. 72 and 72. And then we, we divide. Oh, it'll give us five. Yes, gives us five, and we divide your correct. You divide, that looks like S, but it's really five. Five is equal to two S, right? And mm -hmm. we divide by two. So we divide by two here. And S is five halves, okay? Now you might want to change this to a decimal just to make the math easier that we're gonna do next. So S, five divided by two is two and a half, okay? okay? And what that means is that, now this isn't necessary to draw in, but I'm gonna draw it in just to show you what this is saying. So here, this means that every two and a half units away from 67, so every two and a half units here, we're going to have another number. Well, this is going to be 69 and a half. And then there's going to be 69 and a half. And then two and a half more, that's gonna bring us to 72, you see? So that's, that's where this, um, these multiples of the standard deviation are. This is my S, okay? 
and there's another two and a half on this side. So at 72 plus two and a half is uh, 74 and a half. And then there's 77 over here. Now, the standard deviation is two and a half. So it stands to reason that if I back up enough, I'm going to have another interval. Okay. So now I know S, now I know K. But <laughs> the question, unfortunately, was about another interval. The question was about an interval from 62 back here. 62 to 72. Now, I mean, 82, sorry, 82. So this um, number, this is 82, and I should have moved it. Let me move that over some, because I'm not going to have room to write it in otherwise. This is going to be 82. So what we want is we want this percentage. Now I do know S, but I don't have K. All right. So there's good news and there's bad news. But now I want to know, whoops, I want to know the percentage between 62 and 82. So I'm going to I want to know the percentage from here to here, OK? So step three is I'm going to use this idea again. x max minus is equal to the mean plus kx. I don't know k. This is a different k because it's a different interval. But once I get that, then I can plug it in. So. I'm going to say step three. Step three, I'm going to apply, apply S to find the K for the integral from 62. to 82. So here, I'm going to say, now remember, here are my x max. Just to remind you, my x max is 82, OK? Because I'm doing the longer interval. So x max is 82. The mean is still um, 72. And my s is two and a half, okay? And I want to know what K is. So I'm going to do my little calculation here. Wait, how do we get 82? Because I, the question, remember, let me go back. There are two intervals in this question. That's the tricky part. You see it? Using uh, in a distribution of 160 values with a mean of 72, at least 120 fall within the interval from 62 to 72. So here's my okay, I see. I here's see. my interval there, right? But now we're looking. The question is actually here, right? How many value, what percentage of value should fall in this interval? Why did we need this interval in the first place? To find the second one? Right. Because this interval gave us information about S, right? This mm -hmm. gave us S. Now I can get a new K for this 62 to 82 interval, because it's not going to be the same K, but it will be the same S. Mm -hmm. OK. The S, this is, this is the hard part of this concept. The S stays fixed. See, so 
if you notice when I, if I keep going, you see how these points are two and a half units apart? Mm -hmm. 67 plus two and a half, 69, two and a half, so forth, right? If I go backwards, these still stay two and a half units apart. So this is going to be uh, 65 and a half, uh, 64, let's see. 64 and a half is going to be this one. This is going to be 64 and a half here. 64 and a half is going to be this number. And 67, let me uh, do that just slightly. 64 and a half is going to be this number in the middle of this hash mark. Now that there's another number over here, right? 16, 79 and a half. But see how this is two and a half units back from 62. So our K, what we're trying to find now is the K from the mean, not 267 like originally, but we're trying to find the K all the way from here all the way to 70 to 62. So this K is going to be different. It's actually going to be, we'll see right now when we do it. Okay. Mm -hmm. So this is going to give us, I'm going to use my, I'm going to use the right side again. 82 is equal to 72 plus, now, remember, I don't have K for this interval, but I do know that S is two and a half units. Okay, so this is step three now. So now I'm going to say that 10, I'm going to skip a step. I'm going to subtract 72 from both sides, but 82 minus 72 is 10. And this is equal to 2.5K. Are you okay with that step? Yeah. Now I'm going to divide both sides by two and a half. So 10 divided by two and a half. Is four. Is, that's right. That's four and that's equal to K. That's the number that we're going to use. This K that I have here, this four, is the interval that I'm gonna to use to put in my formula to find the percentage between 62 and 82, okay? So remember my formula, I'm gonna bring it up here. Step four. Step four is going to be, I'm gonna use K equal to four to find P for the interval between sixty two and eighty two. Okay, so that is going to be P, and I'm going to here I'm going to use equal because. It's one minus one over, remember it's K squared. So I'm gonna have K is four. So this is going to be K is four. So this is four squared, right? And if you do the, the math, you get P is equal to, it looks like T, but it's, Supposed to be a P. I think that's a little more believable. One minus one over 16. And if you do the, the math there, okay, this is going to come out to be 0 0.9375, right? Mm-hmm. And if I make that a percentage, 
then that's going to be 93.75%. And so that's where that comes from. But yeah, that, that's quite a problem there. <laughs> that problem is, if you can do this problem, you can do any, this is the hardest Kebyshev's problem on here. Most of okay. the rest of them are easier. So if you can do this one, then you can you can do any of the rest of them that are there because this is the only one that requires two intervals um, for that reason. The first interval was there essentially so that we could get S. And then the second interval comes because that's actually what we want to know. Once we have S, we can go and get the K that we actually want because this K equals two is not the K that we actually want, but it does allow us to get S. And that's the purpose behind that. Okay. Any other questions about that? Mm. No, but I'm on. 3.3. 3. 3, 3, okay. All right, let me switch. Um, let me switch screen shares. I think I might have 3.3 3 somewhere around here. Uh, let's see, what was that? Oh, no, I have 3.4 open and I have 3. Okay, let me check. Let me check something. Hold on. Let me go. Two, three, three. Okay. It's number eight. Number eight. All right, let's take a look. It's waiting. Okay, come on now. I know you have it. It's telling me it doesn't, but I'm sure it's it's lying. <laughs> um, hold on. Homework three, four, there it is. Number eight, you said. All right. Um let's do this thing. Pull up this. Let's do that. And let's go here. Number eight on three three. All right. So The average miles driven annually per licensed driver in the United States is approximately 14,090 miles. If we assume a fairly mound-shaped distribution with a standard deviation of approximately 3,500 miles, find the following. Okay. All right. Um, all the parts or a particular one? Jason? Yes. Are you looking for all the parts or a particular? All, Did you of have them. A, all of them. Okay. All right. So we're looking at a mound shaped distribution. This is one of the ones that's a bell shaped curve, which we're going to hear so much more about later. Um, when you draw a bell shaped curve, okay, you want to uh, draw in what the values are. So the, the mean is always in the middle, okay? So it says that, here it says the average number of miles is approximately 14,090. So I'm gonna make a note of that number before That's I leave the mean. screen here. That's the mean, right? And it has a standard deviation of 3,500. Okay, so we're gonna have to do a little bit of arithmetic. We want, the Z score for the first one is we want the Z score for 16,000 miles. Okay. So, um, and then we want the Z score for 10,000. 
Okay, so I'll come back to see when we're ready for that. Let's get a new whiteboard and see what we can do with this. So this is going to be section three, three, number eight, section three, three. And this is number eight. So number eight, all right, here it is. Okay, so what we do when we draw this, go to black, we draw a bell curve here. And I said, go to black, but it went to green, why? There it is, okay. So we're black, all right. Here's my bell curve. Now, I'm gonna draw my mound. Sometimes this is more fluid than others. We'll see how I do today. And draw, and whoops. Am I supposed to draw that? Yes, you should draw a bell curve. And in the middle of it, you should draw a line for your mean. That we're going to label as 14,090 miles. Okay. Now, We know that our standard deviation is uh, 3,500 miles. So let me make a note here. The mean, this is a, this is what they're calling a mound shaped distribution, which you can also call this a bell shaped curve. And when we get a little further in the book, you'll hear it referred to as normal. So it's mound shape and it has a mean of 14,090 with a standard deviation of 3,500 miles, okay? So those are all the particulars that we need. Now, whoops. We need that too, but not just yet. <laughs> All right, so now there we are. There's my, I'm gonna move this over just a little bit so we can see it better. <clears throat> there's my, okay, so there's my particulars. Now, I wanna know for question A, it said, A says, oops. A says, I want to find the Z score, the Z score for 16,000. Okay. So now some of these uh, data, okay, sometimes they land right exactly on a, um, on a multiple, just kind of like the Ks. Sometimes they land exactly on a K, sometimes they don't. But we're looking for 16,000. So 16,000 we know is gonna be somewhere here, okay? We also know that if we were to add 3,500 to this, okay? That would be 17,590. So this, this number here would be 17,590. Now, let me remind you that I got that by taking 14,090 and adding 3,500 to it, okay? Um, so 16,000 is not going to be exactly one standard. It's okay. 
that's okay. But what we do know, 16,000 is going to be somewhere here. Let me draw another line and let me draw it in green this time. 16,000 is going to be somewhere here. Bring it here. Okay, so we're looking at this number. I don't know exactly, but I do know that it's higher than the mean. Now, what am I going to do with my z-score? Well, the z-score, we have a formula for it. And I'll show you. But the z-score is the mean. I'm uh, sorry. It's the score or the value. Maybe for right now, I'll call it the value. The value minus the mean. Sometimes the value is larger than the mean, like it is here. Sometimes it's smaller. So z-scores can be negative. Not always, but they can be. Value minus the mean over the standard deviation. Okay. That's how you find the z-score. Okay. So it's just a calculation. So we're going to do our value, which is 16,000. Minus the mean. The mean is 14,090. Okay, and we're going to divide that by our standard deviation, which is 3,500. And normally we round this to two decimal places. Sometimes she asks for four. Let me check the slides and see what she, what she asked for in the, because the homework doesn't indicate it, but usually we go with that. Go ahead and calculate this for me, 3,500. And we'll see, whoops, 3,500. And see if we can come out with what we're supposed to. 16,000 minus 14,090 over 3,500. I got um, 15,995.8. Hmm. Let's, uh, let's try that again. Let me put up the calculator on the screen. Don't forget that you need parentheses around the top, okay? You have to do the subtraction first. So you get 16,000 minus... 14,090. Three point. Yeah, that sounds better. This is uh, divided by 3,500. And I get point five four five seven. Check your, uh, check your calculator entry. Sixteen thousand. Oh. Minus fourteen thousand ninety divided by three thousand five hundred. Okay. We know it should be positive from the diagram, and we know it should be less than one standard deviation away because we we weren't thirty five hundred units away from it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let me check the slides and see how many decimal places she wants. So um, three point. Oh wait, these are not three point. Let me give me a minute here to go into the PowerPoints. This is three point, is this 3.2 or 3.3 you're in? 
3.3. Okay, I thought so. Yeah, I need to open up those PowerPoints. So let me open them. And let me see. File. Open. 3, 4. Um, I might not have it downloaded. Let's see. Um... This PC, actually, no, browse, and, oh, here it is, root three, measures the position, open that, okay, here it is, let me just check something, okay, percentile, She didn't say no, she doesn't make it a big deal here. The only example she gave was this one. Yeah, she doesn't mention how many, but usually it's usually it's anywhere between two and four. It's, let me show you the slide that it's on. Um, we'll have a lot more to do with this in chapter six when we get there. Um, but right now, our here's my z-score formula. X, which is my data value, minus the mean X bar over the standard deviation, okay? And she gave you one example of doing that. A student scored 65 on, a, with a, on an exam that had a mean of 50 and a standard deviation of 10. So, all right, let's, let's go with um, whatever she has. Let me see what she has for the answer here how many decimal places did she give you she gave you three. three it looks like so well two after the decimal right mm -hmm. so 0 0.55 and that works because we have to remind you what we had we had this uh, I don't even know how to answer the right one if this is going to be on the quiz tomorrow. What What do you mean you don't know how to answer the right one? Because I mean, I'm looking at the answer sheet and it's mm -hmm. the first one, 0 0.5 and then 17, 1.17 mm -hmm. and then 19,690. Oh, wait, those are whole numbers. Basically decimals. Yeah, so the first... Remember, this was a three-part question, right? Mm -hmm. So we got the first answer, remember? So look, let's look at this here. Let me share the screen again. Let me share this. So we did the calculation the first time, and we got this, right? Now, if you want to round this to two decimal places, what happened? Um, I don't know. Okay, then let's remind you. So here, if you're going to round this, then you can. We're looking at two places after the decimal here. So let me spotlight this. Okay, so we're looking at this four, right? We have mm -hmm. 0. 0.54, right? Behind the four is a five. You see, if the number, so we want to round to where the four is. So you have to look to the next number to the right. If that number is five or more, the number that you're looking at goes up one. Okay, so we don't have to worry about the rest of these digits. But because there's a five behind it, if it's five or more, you round up. So this becomes 
five five. Oh. Okay. Is there a way to round it up with the calculator or no? Yeah, you can if you um if you want to set your decimal places, you can go to mode here. Mm -hmm. You can you see under your second um this the second line you see this thing that says float yes if you move your arrow over and set it on the number of decimal places that you want okay so <clears throat> if you want two places you'd set it on two let's set it on two and then hit enter so that it it will turn and actually take it from you okay now let's go back. We're going to have to recalculate that. It's not going to automatically do it for us, but let's see. So we're going to, I'm going to put this in and show you 16,000. So we have that minus 14, oops, 14,090. Okay, divided by 3,500, 3,500, there it is. Mm. Okay, now just keep in mind that if she asked you to round some of them to two and some of them to four and you want your calculator to do that, you'll have to change it. For the one, or you can you can write out the numbers and then round them after. But you can, yeah, you can have it rounded to however many places you want. Okay. And the way you mm -hmm. do that is you go one more time, you go to the mode key, you go to the second line where it says float, and you change your decimal places to whatever you choose. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's places after the decimal, not numbers that display on your on your calculator. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. you can enter more than a two-digit number, but this is the number of decimal places that will display for you. All right? Yep. Okay. So now that we feel better about that part of life, right? <laughs> let's let's try to do the z score for 10,000 now. So let's try doing b together, all right? You want to try it? All right. All right. So here, let's now 10,000 just to give us some perspective is going to be somewhere on this side of my distribution, right? So let me draw another line here. And 10,000 is going to be somewhere here. Just to give us some perspective. So I'm going to do part B now. I'm going to do the Z score for 10,000. Okay, so let's do it. The value minus the mean over the standard deviation. So we have 10,000. Let me I'll probably move this over here, right? Um, so we get 10,000 minus the mean. What is our mean? One. 14,090. Right, 14,090, good. And our standard deviation was? 3,500, five, 3, 3, very good. So now let's see if we can put this in the calculator and get our answer. So I'm gonna go ahead and move the screen, get my calculator back. And we're going to put this in. So we're going to have, remember your parenthesis. So you have 10,000 minus 14,090. 
and we're going to divide that by 3,500. What do you get this time? Uh, 1.17. But it should be negative because the yes. 10,000 goes in for the negative counts, okay? The negative means that we're actually on the left side of the mean. So the sign, the positive or negative, means something. So the negative here, you want to make sure you write it in. Negative 1.17 is correct. Good job. All right. Okay, that wasn't too bad. Let's look at the third part of this question. So let's see, on one of these screens somewhere, I have a homework. Okay, <laughs> um, all right, so now let me scroll up. The number eight, all right, now, the number of miles that correspond, now, this actually is a three-part question, all right? Because you have to compute a z-score for each one of these. I mean, I'm sorry, an x for each one of these z-scores, okay? So the number of miles corresponding to z-scores of 1.6. Now, I want to check something here for number nine. Uh, number eight, I should say. Um, yeah, the, the second, the second Z-score, I don't know if you have this on your homework or not, this second Z-score should be negative 0 0.5, okay? It's, it's not written in here, but it should be a negative 0 0.5. A Z-score of 1.6, a Z-score of negative 0 0.5, and a z-score of zero, okay? So the way this looks is this. Um, we're going to say, let's come over here. Let's get another whiteboard. We're going to calculate, we're gonna calculate the value we're going to calculate the x value for each z score, okay? And we're given some z scores, all right? So this is part c of your same question. So here, um, I'm going to make this a little wider right here, all right. So the first z score that we want is z equals 1.6, okay? So what we're going to do, we're gonna use that same formula, and here I'll write the symbols. I haven't written them yet. I'm gonna write it here for you. Z is equal to, the symbols look like this. It's going to be the value x, minus the mean, which we're going to symbolize with x bar. And then we're going to divide that by the standard deviation. Now, what we were doing in A and B was we were, we had these three values on the right. We were looking for Z. This time, what we're going to do is we're going to have a Z score. We're going to have a mean. We're going to have a standard deviation. And we're going to be looking for this x here, okay? That's what we're going to be looking for. So in this case, we're going to set it up this way. We know what z is, 1.6. We don't know what x is, okay? So we're gonna write x minus, we know the mean, the mean is 14,090. And we know s. S is 3,500. Any questions about this part of the setup so far? Nope. 
You okay? All right. So yep. now, again, we're making a nod to algebra. This is why algebra is a prerequisite for this course, for problems like this. Okay. Now, there's a couple of ways that we can show this work. Okay. Um, if you feel comfortable with something like proportions, you can cross multiply this if you're used to that, or you can show it by multiplying both sides of the equation by 3,500 to get rid of the fraction. So which way would you like me to show this? Uh, multiply it by 3,500. Okay. We can do that. So let me get rid of this here. Not that it's wrong if you put it there, but if we're going to, so the step is going to look like this. We're going to say 3,500 times 1.6, it's already there, is going to equal 1.6, okay? And that's going to equal, I'm going to write the step. So this is going to be, let me see. This is going to be 3,500 times the fraction. So I have 3,500 times x minus 14,090. That's not the best writing I've ever had. Sorry about that. Over 3,500. And what that does is that gets rid of my fraction for me. Because that 3,500 that I'm multiplying by is actually in the numerator at the top of my fraction. And so this cancels, which is very nice. That's what I wanted. So go ahead and multiply 3,500 by 1.6. Let's do that. So let's take... I got... 5,600.00. 3,500 times 1.6. That gives you, I agree, 5,600. Very good. So now, now it becomes easier. It's just a matter of uh, manipulating the rest of the equation. So we have, this is 5,600 on this side. And that's equal to x minus 14,090, right? And if I want to solve for x, what is it that I have to do now? Uh, you, you add 14,090 to the other side. Yes. Or on both sides. Very good. So we add 14,090 to both sides. And if I do that, x is equal to 14,090. Oops. Sorry. 14,090 plus 5,600, right? And what does that give us? 19. Hold on. Yeah. 19,690. 690. And let's just check. Oops. If I can get my mouse to cooperate here. 690. Oh. Yep. Hello. How can I help you? Mm, here. No, yeah. So this matches that first answer, okay? Mm -hmm. So now the second um, question, remember to make it negative 0 0.5 and do the same thing, Jason, okay? All right. Let me see what our guest wants. Let me see if you can get the second, the, the second and third parts of that question. Um, All right. 
my guest that has just arrived. May I have your name, please? Jackie. Jackie. Hi, Jackie. Hi. How can I help you this morning? Um, um I have questions with 3.4. The oh, okay. Let me see. Give me a second. The box plot. Issue. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and then, if there's going to be, it'll, if it makes you feel better, there's going to be a walkthrough going up a little later. I just didn't have a chance. Okay. To get okay. Okay. But you can certainly ask. That's not a problem. Mm -hmm. um, what can I help you with? So you're going to uh, upload a kind of a there'll, step by step then? Yeah, there'll be a video just like there has been. I just, didn't get to it yesterday. Oh, uh, okay. What, yeah, what, I saw the other ones and they were helpful. But if you're going to upload something, then I'll wait for it and kind of follow. No, no, follow it's it fine. Through. It's fine. You can ask me. I just wanted you to know because people were asking about it. Got it. Okay. I can wait for it because, I mean, I, I have questions overall on, on everything. So if you do the step by step, I'll wait for it to be uploaded. Well, I can, I'll, I'll I can talk process. to you about some of it. I mean, it's not a problem. Okay. I'm sure. I'm sure Jason will be a gentleman, right, Jason? <laughs> hmm? I okay. said I'm sure Jason will be a gentleman <laughs> and listen to our discussion of box plots for a few minutes. Um. All right. Let me bring up the slides really quick. So, is it just? Are you just intimidated by it? Did you just look at it and go, "I don't think I can do this. I don't know what I'm doing here." Yeah, and then also, how would we do it on a Word document? Is there a specific way that we something? on word that we can use so that we can do the the plot are you trying to draw a box plot is that are you talking about drawing it manually is that what you mean uh, no because I'm, I'm doing the work on the computer on a word document uh-huh so if there's no way of doing it on on word it would have to be manually drawn um, correct? yeah i i would suggest for this it would if Word does it, and I'm not sure they do, it would probably be easier to draw it manually and okay. take a picture and insert it into your Word document. Oh, okay, okay. That, makes that sense. would that that would be I I think that would be less aggravating than trying to figure it out. It's figure not it out. it's not that hard to draw actually. Um, let me give you. Let me do something here. Let me see. This is, let me go to the 3.4 homework. If I can figure out which screen this is. <laughs> bear, with, <laughs> bear with me because I have a bunch of documents open on a bunch of different screens and it's, it's making it a little bit uh, hard to narrow down here <laughs> um yeah i've got i think i've got all the sections open um okay let's see if i can go to this uh actually what if i just open i know what i'll do oh there it is no, that's the homework. I want the homework section, not the, let me see if I, oh yeah, here it is. Okay, so now let me see if I can make my way back to the shared screen here. All right, so you should be able to see, I hope, here is 3.4, okay? Yeah. Now, the first three, okay, don't even ask you to draw a box plot okay mm -hmm. when you see the video for this i do a box plot of number one just to show you what the box plot actually means because okay. four and five should be rather easy but sometimes students get them mixed up okay so for the first three we want the five number summary now do you know what the five number summary is uh no Okay. Well, it's five pieces of data that describe the distribution. Okay. So the five number summary is always the same five numbers, but they're not always the same values, if that makes sense. Okay. So your five number summary 
is going to be the following. Your five number summary, and it's this is on the slides. Let me pull up the slides for 3.4 so that I can show you that. The five number summary for this is, okay, here's, let me scroll back. The five number summary is given to you on the second slide. Here they are. The minimum, the first quartile, the second quartile, the third quartile, and the maximum. Okay. Those are the five number summary. Now, you're not required to get these by hand, okay? I also show you in the, the video and Professor Nickdell, if are you in her lecture class by any chance or not? No. You're not, okay. If you were in her lecture class, she would go over showing you by hand the first time so you can see where these are coming from, but you're welcome to use your calculator to get it, all okay. right? So what you can do, let me see if I have, I don't know if I have the data. Let me see if I still do from the, I still, okay, I, I have some data. I'm not sure it's the first. I think this is the data for number six, actually. Uh, okay. Do you have a question, Jason? No. No? Okay. Now, what you can do, let me bring up the calculator so I can show you this. Um, here's on the calculator screen. Now, do, are you um, comfortable using the calculator or not so much? Not so much. Not so much, okay. No problem. We'll we'll try and take care of that for you. Um, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to first of all, okay, I'm going to go ahead for the sake of uh, um, explanation here and get rid of this. This is actually the data for number six, but I'm going to go ahead and get rid of it for now and pretend that we're starting with a new calculator. So there's my, so if you wanna get rid of data that you have in your calculator, oops, except I didn't hit the right, let me just clear that, enter that, okay. Clear enter is a way to clear the data out. So if I had data, let me show you that one more time. If I had data like this, mm -hmm. for example, now I have my decimal places, set to two at the moment. So that's why you're seeing two places after the decimal. If you're seeing a float, if you're just seeing whole numbers, that's okay. I just happen to set the decimal places to two um, okay. for a particular reason here. So if I had data in here, right? And I wanted to get rid of it. I can go up to the list descriptor, which is L1 up here. I can go up here using the up arrow key, highlight the L1, and I can go clear, enter, and it will get rid of it. Okay. Okay. If you have multiple lists, there's a couple of different ways to do it, which you've seen. Now, what I'm gonna ask you to do is go ahead and read me the data. Do you have the homework assignment in front of you? Yeah. Okay. Go ahead and read me the data for the first problem that you have. For here. number one? For number one. Go ahead and read it. Eight. Okay. So the way I enter data is I make sure I'm I make sure you're below the list name. And I I um I make sure my cursor's there and I put the number there. And I hit enter and it goes in. Okay. Just like a, just like a spreadsheet. Just okay. punch it in and enter. So eight and then what? 12. Okay, 12. Then? 32. Okay, then? Six. Good. 27. 27. 19. 19. And 54. And 54. Now, it's not strictly required for the five number summary, but it does make it nicer for some analysis that we're gonna do later. I'm gonna go ahead and sort this list. Okay. 
okay? Because if you're doing anything by hand, sorting it makes it nicer most of the time. So the way I sort my list is I go to stat. I go, now that we have two sorts, we have the sort A as an apple and the sort D as in David. The sort A will sort it from the low number to the high number. So I'm gonna take sort A right here. And I'm going to specify which list it was. Now we were in list one. Anything that's in blue, in my case, it's blue. Your faceplate color may be different. So yours may be orange or green or something. But above the number one, you should see something that says L1. Okay. And so to get that, you're going to hit the second key, which is next to mode in the second column on the left. Second. And then number one, you're going to specify, I want you to sort list one and then close the parenthesis, which is next to the division key. And then hit enter. You should see done. And if you go to stat one more time and you're on edit, you click enter, you'll see that it's sorted your list for you. Okay, yeah. Okay, that just makes, and I just want you to see this because we can tell a few things just by looking. We know what the minimum is. What's our minimum here? Six. Six. If you want a quick way to get to the bottom of your list, you from the top, you can go up to the top with the up arrow key, then hit the up arrow key one more time. And it'll take you okay. to the bottom. You can also scroll, but it's just, this is faster. That's yes, 54. <laughs> so our minimum is six. Our maximum is 54, right? Now, yes. let me show you. She wants you to use the calculator to get your five number summary. So we're going to go to stat. You've seen, if you've watched the other videos, you've seen me do this. Stat, right arrow to count. One var stat, okay? This doesn't require a frequency list. We're in L1 now. This is the new piece. We're going to calculate. Now, I haven't shown you this yet. Some of you may have seen it already, but if you haven't, this is the new piece. You see how down here there's a cursor blinking and an arrow? Yes. It means there's more data. So if you use your down arrow key, look what you're seeing. Additional information. There's your five number summary. Oh, okay. Remember? Oh, what yeah, was it five is. The, the minimum, minimum Q1, Q1, the median, which is Q2, and your Q3 and your max. And your max, okay. So here, there's your five number summary. So half of this question is to write this down. Minimum six, Q1, eight, median 19, and so forth. Okay. Now, the only other thing about the uh, the only other thing about the the rest the the first three is to find the IQR. And the IQR is a little formula that's always the same. The IQR is Q three minus Q one all the time, every day, twenty four seven. So, in our case here, the IQR will be, let me put it on the screen for you. My, um, let me annotate with a text box, if I can get it to cooperate, there we go. All right, so we have my IQR, I'm going to put this in black, I think. So, my IQR is going to be Q3, Q3 minus Q1. So what is Q3? Three is 32. 32, what is Q1? Eight. Yeah, so now we're gonna do a little calculation. What is 32 minus eight? 24. 24. So you'd write 
your five number summary, you'd write IQR is Q3 minus Q1, and you can write the numbers in if you want. Um, okay. this, this would be, um, I, get, I should do that. This is 32 minus eight. Sneak it in there. There we go. And that's 24. And that's all you have to do on the first three. So the first three don't require you to draw the box plot. Okay. The next two give you the box plot and ask you to look at the five number summary from the box plot. Okay. Okay. Are you more um, comfortable going the other way and looking at the box plot and finding it from there? Um, so if I give you fine. like, look at number four. Okay. If I give you the box plot here, Look at number four here. Can you tell me what the minimum is? So that would, would that be three? Yeah. Okay. How about the first quartile? Um, I'm not sure on that one. Okay. The first quartile is always the left edge of the rectangle. Okay. So here's your rectangle, right? The left edge is Q1. So what is Q1 here? Five. Okay. Now Q3 is the right edge of your rectangle. Which so is that's nine. nine. The median may or may not be right in the middle of the box. Okay. If it's not right in the middle, it just means your distribution is skewed. What is your median? The median is the line that's in the middle of your rectangle. So what is my median here? Eight. Yeah, so in, a, in this case, my minimum is three. three. Q1 is? Five. Five. Q2 or the median is eight. eight. Q3 is the right edge, which is nine. And the maximum is? 11. 11. Now, how do I get the IQR? You subtract Q3 from Q1. Right. So Q3 is 11 minus. No, no, no. Q, no, be careful. Q3 is not 11. That's the max. I'm sorry. Nine. Nine. And Q1 is five. So Q3 That's... minus Q1 would be nine minus five, which is four. Four. Not so hard, right? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So the first five are like that. Okay. Number six will be in the the video. There's mm -hmm. there's an explanation of number six because it goes through the shape of the distribution. It goes through the values. If you'd like to stay and work, we can work on it. Go ahead and put these data in your calculator for number six. Okay. Go ahead and put them in there. Get the five number summary and get the IQR for me, okay? You think you can do that? Um, I have a few minutes before I have to go back to work. Oh, you have to go back? Okay. Well, if you have to go back to work, that's okay. Um, go ahead and drop me a private message in the chat with your student number. Okay. So I can give you credit for being here. And look for the video around, I think it's probably going to go up around two o'clock because it finished rendering, but I haven't had time to, um, I haven't had time to convert it yet because I just made it this morning. Okay. So to, to, to summarize, when I do six, seven, the, the rest of uh, 3.4, mm -hmm. I do the five number summary by entering this data into the calculator and then do my box plot then, correct? You do your box plot and then you you look for outliers, which is also part of it, which I explain for you also. Sometimes we have outliers, sometimes we don't. Okay. Okay. Uh, perfect. So this is this helped so far, but th thank you so much. You're welcome. Don't forget to drop me your student number, okay? Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Jackie. Jason, how are you doing with the one, that one that I left you on? Oh, uh, hold on now. I was looking at 3.4 just in case I can get a head start on that one. 
No but problem. Let me, no let problem. me get back to 3.3. No problem. You're, you're doing really good. You might, you might finish by Thursday at the rate you're going. All right, so I already finished A, B, uh -huh. but now I gotta do C. How are we doing with, yeah, I left you doing the second part of it, right? The negative, um, the negative 0 0.5, if I remember correctly, right? Mm -hmm. All right, hold on, where's the paper? Hmm. Z equals zero for C. Right. And so what was that value that you got? What was what was the X value that you got for that? Hold on. I'm doing it right now. Mm -hmm. Fourteen ninety. Fourteen thousand ninety, which is the mean, right? Yep. Very good. That's right. Nice job. Mm -hmm. That wasn't so bad, huh? No. Good job. And finish with that one. Nice job. Good job. So you'll be ready to start 3.4 soon? Soon? Yeah, soon. Okay. Good deal. <coughs> Excuse me. Let me see if I can upload the get that started uploading because that might take a minute to upload that. It usually takes a while to. And I uploaded the um, embedded tutoring session from last night also okay. where we where we went over some um, some stuff. Mm -hmm. I think some people, I think Giovanna was working on it and I think somebody else was asking some questions. So that'll be there. Look for the... Um, Look for the 3.4 walkthrough, like I said, after, I would say around two o'clock. I'll put a, a message on the Pronto chat when it's available, but I would look for it a little later as soon as I can get it um, uploaded. Okay. Okay? Yep. All right, Jason. Good work today. I appreciate, your, I appreciate your effort and your time. Yep. Thank you. You're very welcome. Take care. Keep up the good work. All right. All right. All right. We'll see you soon. All right. Bye. Bye. Your screen.